Stop rushing Drek. If you want to get the maximum honor from your Alterac Valley games, then you need to be doing all of the objectives along the way to the last boss. Now you might have noticed at the end of some of your games, if you're playing Alliance, that you end with somewhere around 750 honor and the Horde ends with somewhere around 3k honor. Now a lot of the time that's because they're doing a lot of the objectives along the way. What I mean by this is killing the lieutenants, killing the commanders, taking towers. Now there's a total of six lieutenants, four commanders, and then the one captain, which is Galv or Belinda, depending on which side you're on. These each give 200 honor, and that can be added on to the additional 200 honor you can get from destroying each of the four towers of your opposing faction to a total of 3,000 extra honor you can get just by doing these objectives. So let's discuss the optimal strategy to maximize your honor and rep gains from Alterac Valley. So I'm going to do this from the viewpoint of an alliance player. So you'd leave your base, you ride together, and you head towards Galv in the Iceblood Garrison. Now what you would like to do at the beginning here is you'd also have a mage or a hunter or a couple of them go to the other side where the horde is rushing from, drop a frost trap, drop down some frost novas, try and slow them as much as you can. Because getting to the boss in the garrison, uh, Galv for us and Belinda for them is a rush. It's a race. So if you get Galv before they get Belinda, you're going to get 200 honor from killing him as well as about 125 rep. Similarly, if they get Belinda before you get Galv, they're going to get 200 honor and 125 rep and you won't get any for killing Galv. So if you know you're not going to get Galv before they get Belinda, just skip them. But if you have a chance, rush in there and kill Galv right away. Also, on your way up to Galv, there's three lieutenants on the way. You have an abomination at the bottom of the hill and two lieutenants outside the garrison. Pull them all in there with you. Rush down Galv first and then kill the lieutenants as well. And at the beginning, you should be sending pairs of players to each of the towers. So on Alliance side, you have the Ice Blood Tower, Tower Point, and West and East Frostwolf Towers. So what they do here is, let's say you have a pair of rogues, for example, you run to Iceblood Tower, there is a commander and a flag inside the tower, and four bowmen on each one. What you need to do is have someone run up to the top right away, aggro the commander, and kite him to the group. So in Iceblood Tower, you would grab that commander and kite him towards Gal's room, likely into Gal's room while they're fighting Galv and the lieutenants at the start, so they can cleave him down with them as well. The commander's worth another 200 honor. The other person that went to the tower, they can line of sight the bowmen while they grab the flag and then kill down the bowmen just so people don't get put in combat as they're passing the towers. And these pairs that went to the tower, you'd likely want them to stay in there. It kind of defend, or depends on how confident you are with them being able to defend on their own. You could just leave one, you could leave two, you might even need more than two, but you want them to guard that for the entire five minutes and make sure you start a timer if you're not using a weak aura or something so that you do end up capping that tower um, before the end of the game. Because each tower that you burn down, which takes that full five minutes, gives you another 200 honor. So after killing Galv and killing the commander out of the Iceblood Tower, your whole group will head to Iceblood Graveyard. Here you want to again kill the lieutenants, there should be one or two on the point. There's another couple that will roam around. You're going to kill all these lieutenants. Again, the group that went up to Tower Point's tower should have the commander pulled down and bringing him towards the group at Iceblood Graveyard. You cleave or AoE down all these lieutenants, all these commanders, and then again head down even further south towards Frostwolf Graveyard. At Frostwolf Graveyard, there's another commander. Kill the commander, again, move on. You're then going to ride all the way into the front of Drek's room, uh, up to the Relief Hut area. You grab the commander from the Relief Hut and you cleave him down while you're pulling the first group out of Drek's room. The Both of the towers should already be clear and the bowmen shouldn't be interrupting you, so your healers should be able to drink and whatnot. 
Now there's also three wing commanders that the tower people should be grabbing. So there's one wing commander uh, at the bottom of Tower Point, there's another one in one of the huts at the entrance to Frostwolf Village, and then there's another one in one of the Frostwolf Towers. Now whoever is just grabbing the towers can just grab these, all you have to do is talk to the guy, and that'll also give you 200 honor as well. Then after you're pulling the War Masters, you kill each of them down individually outside, then you can go in, pull the last one out, uh, it kind of depends on your group how you want to handle this. You could either pull the last, I believe it's Iceblood Warmaster out and kill him and then be able to uh, kill Drek afterwards. Or you could do them both together inside the room and just have a tank uh, tank the Iceblood Warmaster so he's not cleaving down the group. But either way, you kill them and kill Drek. And then after you've kind of got Drek to around half health, you want to be watching your tower uh, timers. So if you did this really fast, your timers will actually probably still have around two minutes left on them. As long as you're finishing it with less than two minutes left, you're good because you can sit inside that finishing score screen for that full two minutes. And once the towers roll over to your control, you're gonna get the honor from them. And the last thing to mention to be able to maximize your honor is making sure that you control your towers as well. So for example, for the Alliance, this is the Stonehearth Bunker, the Ice Wing Bunker, and the two Dumbledore Bunkers at the top. If those roll over to being burned down by the Horde, you actually lose bonus honor at the end of the game. I believe it's around 200 honor per tower that you lose. So trying to control those is also important. I wouldn't specifically send people back, but just have the people who are dying, like you usually will have a few deaths and they'll end up rezzing somewhere like Stormpike Graveyard or back at your spawn point. Just have them go and try and defend those bunkers or take them back if they got taken because that'll just be that extra little bit of honor that you'll get at the end. Let's talk about why people are spamming Rush, Drek, or Keck. Now the reason for this is they're trying to maximize their reputation gains. And by just rushing straight to Drek, getting him down as fast as possible, it's a simple strat for pugs to follow. And it's an easy way to get your quick rep from the win and your three honor marks to be able to turn in and get that extra bit of rep as well. But you're missing out on massive amounts, likely around 3K per game, by not taking the extra literally two to three minutes to do all of these objectives on the way down. Now you might think, well, why would I care? All I care about is the items I get from the rep. But the thing you have to think about is that the rep is really easy to get and you're getting it from doing this anyways. But if you're going to just rush Drek only, you're literally stopping, I mean, hundreds of thousands of honor from happening because you're talking about 3000 honor for those 40 players. So that is how you maximize your honor gains in Alterac Valley. Now, if you guys liked this video, I'd really appreciate it if you drop a like below and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and hitting that bell to let you know when I drop a new video. There'll be more content like this in the future, including a lot of stuff to do with rogue gameplay. Also, please consider coming over to twitch.tv slash cliffwow, following me there and getting notifications when I go live on Twitch. I'll be streaming a lot of classic WoW, Battlegrounds, PvP type of stuff, and I'd really like to be able to interact with you guys live. Anyways, once again, thank you so much for watching the video. I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one.